And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are looking at part four of the mixing technique series. We're going to be looking at mixing keyboards today. One of my favorites. Let's just hop right into the mix. So once again, we're taking a look at one thing remains here. Uh, today I have four different keyboard tracks. We have a piano track, a mellow kind of pad track. We have a dance synthy kind of keyboard track. And then I have like an arpeggiator, like a like I hit one note and it goes dun 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 dun. So that's kind of like a modern synth that I wanted to add into this mix. One thing to note when you're recording with keyboards, if you use software MIDI instruments in your digital audio workstation, it's going to be a lot easier to mix because they make really really awesome sounding keyboard sounds in the box. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That's what I've always loved to do. And so you're going to see the mixing process here is more about finding the right kind of sound and doing minor tweaks rather than using a built-in keyboard sound and then trying to mix that. So let's take a look at the regular grand piano sound I'm using. I'm using Logic's built-in piano sound. This thing works great for worship. Let's take a look at the verse. Yeah, so let's take a look at what processing I'm doing here. Wow, really, really easy because I already have a great sounding piano sound that's built in. So let's see, I'm rolling off about 120 hertz to get rid of that low rumble. I'm taking out a little bit of the harshness here at around 1.5k, um, just about 3 dB of gain. And then I'm doing some minor 3 dB compression. Let's see what that is doing on the keyboard track. Super, super minor stuff, guys, because we already have a great starting point, okay? That's why I love using MIDI keyboards. Let's take a look at the next kind of keyboard sound we have. It's a mellow, kind of synthy, spacey kind of pad. Let's take a look at that. I love this sound. Really, really nice. Literally... I apply the exact same channel strip to all my keyboard sounds because it's just very, very minor, basic, and these are settings that you can use on any kind of keyboard. So that's what I'm doing with this keyboard. Let's take a look at the Dance Synth keyboard at Chorus 2. Just a really nice washy kind of pad we got going on here. Uh, as far as in addition to the SSL channel we have going on, I have another EQ here that's adding a little bit of low, a little bit of high, and then what I like to do is automate this high pass filter here so that in lower sections I can kind of have more of a high cut here. Let's take a look at that. And I can just change that throughout the song. The very last keyboard I have going on is kind of this note repeater effect that I have in Logic. Let's see what that sounds like. This is how I achieve the effect. It's with a MIDI effect called note repeater. Without, it sounds like this. I have it repeating the note seven times. And so it gives you that modern, dancey kind of sound. Uh, in addition to the SSL, I'm literally just doing a little bit of a high cut filter because without it, it was a little too bright for me. And I just want it to be a nice little layer behind everything in the mix, so I didn't want it to be too prominent. So guys, that is all I'm doing with keyboards. As I mentioned earlier, it's more important to find a really great sound that already fits in your mix and then just do minor tweaks with everything in context. Let's hear what all the keyboards are doing simultaneously. Just a huge wall of sound, it's so beautiful. And guys, that is literally it. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this kind of content, 
please feel free to subscribe, leave a like on this video. Uh, it would mean so much to me, guys. Guys, I will see you in the next part of the series. In the last part of the series, mixing vocals. See you there.